Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. And today we're gonna try something a little different. Instead of me doing voiceovers in post, um, I'm gonna attempt to do this kind of live while I paint. Anyways, uh, today I want to paint a flathead minnow and as you can see, I have the old Google open and I'm just trying to see some good reference photos here, what I want to paint. And as you can see, hopefully, uh, there's a bunch of variety in this fish. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to basically um, take elements of these photos that I like and then combine it into a one piece. So this um, particular species of fish has a lot of metallic uh, colors, especially like copper. Uh, I could see some silver and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, before we can actually start painting those colors, it's a good idea to paint the base with black. So that's what I'm just going to do right now. Get that paint all over the details. I think I'm going to leave the belly white still, because no, no reason to paint that just yet. We just want to have a nice base of black here. That's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, that's a good place to start. So I got a bunch of these uh, new metallic colors from uh, the Army Painters uh, War Paints uh, set. These are from Denmark, which was actually kind of surprising. But uh, yeah, it has a lot of interesting uh, metallic tones, and I'm gonna start with this uh, Weapon Bronze. And I think just a couple of drops is going to be enough. Well, maybe four. So what I plan to do here is basically lay down the bronze paint around here and then go to the belly with some metallic other colors. Like um, I think silver is probably going to go pretty well here. But uh, yeah, let's get that paint on. Okay, next I'm going to use this um, uh, chrome color from Vallejo and we're going to do the lower bar parts of the belly with this. Actually, this is one of my favorites. It has really nice uh, coverage and it also has quite a nice reflective qualities to it too, which is always nice when you're trying to do some realistic paint jobs. All right, so let's do the belly or lower part of the belly at least. And I think I'm also gonna do the head with this color as well. We can sort of like build it up with some other colors later on. I think I'm gonna like this the most here. It's easiest to just use other colors afterwards. Yeah, this is looking pretty nice so far. So now that we have the two tones here, I think I actually want to add another one here, which is uh, bright brass, and that would go basically underneath the lateral line here, and probably around the head as well a little bit. I think that'll look pretty nice. 
Let's try at least. Okay, I have the brass locked and loaded in the gun. Let's see how this looks. You know what, I think I really like this. This looking nice and subtle, which is what we want. Yeah, I'm not sure how well this is uh, translating in the camera, because this is a very faint color. But so far, I'm liking it. Looks really good. You know, I was actually debating on using gold instead of this. I think that would have been a little bit too bright for this sort of paint job. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I think that looks pretty, pretty decent so far. All right, next we're going to have to do some um, varnishing because I'm going to use this... Uh, uh, wash technique as you have seen me doing on the channel before so that requires me to use this so that will be next on the list and for this I think I'm going to actually reduce it a little bit uh, where is my reducer oh there we go this is actually flow improver but you can use this as a reducer as well Four drops, I think, should be enough. And I'm going to use a nail to mix it all together. So basically, the target area is going to be mostly here when I do the, the wash technique, but I usually end up doing the whole thing because I don't want the paint coming off while I do the um, wash technique. So let's get this thing covered. You probably could use um, just a brush to do this, but I just always end up using a hairbrush. Just easier. And that should do it. Now we just have to wait roughly 10 minutes and we can do the wash. And if you happen to use your airbrush to uh, apply the varnish, you have to make sure that the brush is clean. So I'm just going to use isopropyl alcohol to um, make sure that uh, the gun is clean for the next step. And I definitely put way too much of it, so don't make the same mistake as me. So you can basically buy these washes um, from the store, or you can make them yourself. So I'm just going to show you a very easy way of doing it. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to use this uh, opaque black uh, wicket variety from Createx. And we're going to do, let's see, four drops. I think that's good enough. And then I'm going to take some airbrush cleaner and add that into it. Maybe couple of drops. Okay, three it is. And then we just mix it together. Now we have our wash. I usually always just like to do it with an airbrush because it's a little bit more convenient. And I usually do this uh, on multiple baits at a time. 
If you just have one, then you can just use a brush or something like that. All right, we are ready. Okay, so let's start spraying. So like I said, I just want to have um, some black highlights here on the back side of the scales. And I think I'm gonna flip it like this, so it's easier for the paint to get into the grooves. And then we just wipe it off. Uh, if you have some paint left, you just take uh, some airbrush cleaner with a piece of uh, paper towel and wipe off the excess. Oh, well, that actually looks pretty good. So I think we're gonna do the other side next. Yeah, not bad, I think. That looks pretty decent. I don't think I have to uh, do any more spraying here. And we can move on to the next step. So at this point I could do either the belly or start painting the back. And I think I'll start with the belly, because that's what I usually do. And I have this uh, uh, really nice pearlescent uh, white from Mission Models. It's called Pearl Starship White. And I think this is probably the best uh, pearlized white that I've come across. It's very ref reflective. So let's give it a good shake, like you always want, and let's start painting. So I'm running this um, pearlized white without reducing it at all, because I feel like you get the best kind of effect from it that way. And I think, unfortunately, you guys can't probably even make out that I'm painting with this pearlized white. But yeah, so far it's looking pretty nice. Okay. I think that's enough. And we can move on to the back. So when I was uh, thinking of what sort of uh, shade I wanted to have on the back, I decided that I want a two-tone uh, kind of look to it. So I'm going to start with this okra and uh, move on from that into Russian brown, which is one of my favorite browns. So I want this okra to basically be the very visible here, and then the back is going to be with that. Russian brown. So let's see how that works out. I think it will look pretty awesome, but uh, you never know. And I think I want to have some of that in the face as well. Just a little bit.
Yeah, I'm definitely digging how this thing is looking so far. Very natural. Yeah, I think that's good enough. And let's switch to that Russian brown. Okay, here comes the brown. Yeah, that's looking awesome. And I think that's where I'll leave this. It's sometimes uh, hard to stop. And I think this is the time. Alright, next I'm going to add that very prominent feature of the fish, which is the uh, black line that goes across its body. And I'm going to add this wicked black. And I'm actually going to reduce it quite a bit. It was uh, three drops of uh, Wicked Black and then uh, Airbrush Thinner, I think, two drops. I think that'll work. Give it a little bit of a swirl, a little bit of a mix, and let's test it out. You know what, I think I'm going to reduce it even further than that. I feel like it's not flowing as much as I wanted it to. So, one more drop, I think. There we go. And a mix. Let's try it again. I think that's the consistency I want. Sometimes it's hard to explain how much you actually want. You just have to try it out and uh, see what works for you. Okay, so let's see if we can get this right. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a very faint line and then just build it up from there. See what happens. That line goes all the way to the eye here, so we gotta add a little bit of black here as well. Getting a little bit of the tip dry here, it's always annoying. I want to try to make it kind of straggly, not really straight line. So I'm just going to wiggle my airbrush and make sure that it becomes kind of squiggly. You know what, that's not looking bad, but I think it needs a little bit more paint. Just a tiny bit back here or somewhere.
think that's not bad, but I think I'm still going to work on this a little bit more. Okay, so the photos that I saw of this particular fish species, um, it doesn't really have very prominent fins. So what I think I will do is I'll just highlight the edges of the fins here. And uh, we'll see how that looks. Okay, so I have these uh, stencils here. And trying to make them align nicely. And we'll have just a little bit of paint. I need a lot. That looks pretty good. That's what I was uh, aiming for. So next time I'm going to do all of the other things. All right, so we're pretty much done here. I just need to add one more little detail that uh, I want to include to this bait. And I'm going to use this squid pink to paint a butthole. Yes, you heard me correctly. <laughs> I actually molded a butthole into this uh, bait. And yeah, we're going to paint that next. Good lord, what has this channel become? <laughs> I'm here painting buttholes for you guys. Good times. And there we have it, a beautiful bundle. Alrighty, so here we have the end result. And I have to say I'm fairly happy with the paint job that I did on this flathead minnow, which is a first for me, and it's always fun to make new things. And also it looks very fishy to me, which is basically the main thing after all. You know, you want to make something that actually catches something too, right? Anyways, I hope you liked the video, and uh, like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and you can also support me on Patreon nowadays too if you want. And on a second note, if uh, by any chance while you were watching this video you thought to yourself, hey, I would really love to have one of those crankbaits that he's making in the video, well, now you can. Just head out to my web shop and there will be a whole bunch of uh, other color patterns for you to choose, and of course other models as well. I will have crankbaits, swim baits, glide baits, you name it. I will probably have it at some point. And you know, it will be a nice way to support the channel too. 